in 1980 was spread a moral code of behavior based on upon the Old Testament, uh, Old and New Testament, and to warn Americans of the rising gay threat. Traditional values fights for include the right to life, opposed opposition against abortion and uh, euthanasia, chastity and patriotism, along with uh, opposition to homosexuality, pornography, and the teachings of evolution in public schools, and illegal immigration. So all of the things that are biblical values, I forget the question number later on here, it, all of those things are Christian values when they're labeled as a hate group. Mm -hmm. And how much longer before it's illegal to support traditional values because it's considered bigotry, uh, Christian bigotry, which is ridiculous. Uh, I went to the I went to the Southern Pov Poverty Law Center website at IUJ.com, and uh, they basically I started by I started with uh, uh, googling anti Christian rhetoric, and what first came up was a, a recent publication by the Catholic League for Religious and Civil Rights talking about statements made by Mikey Weinstein, who is a um, yeah. Do you see? Yeah. He's an uh, he's an attorney that whose whose activities I'm well aware of because he he focuses his uh, anti-Christian defamatory rhetoric against the military, and has had some success in getting the military to to back off its uh, uh, Christian fundamental values, like you know taking um, Christian-related inspirational uh, um, posters and that sort of thing off. Uh, um, uh, you know, yeah. down from the uh, from the wall of uh, Air Force stations and that sort of thing. So Weinstein endorses the Southern Poverty Law Center's classification of Christian groups as hate groups. And in that same, again, at that, at that same website, um, I got a sample of the hate groups: Family Research Council. <laughs> American College of American College Amer American College of Pediatricians, American Family Association, because they oppose uh, the values and the practice of homosexuality, they're defined by hate group as hate groups, and the Southern Poverty Law Center I be on the map. classifies them like we're that. We're not doing something right if we're not we're on not, the map. We're not, but uh, <laughs> they just don't know about it. It's, well, that's what I mean, though. But if you're doing enough for the Lord. I, I, how much longer before all the churches are going to populate this? Well, at least the ones that preach the Word of God. The ones that are lukewarm, they don't make it to the list. Oh, they'll, they'll have to. You're right. They'll, they'll shut it down. Yeah. Yeah. They'll shut it down. Well, on the view. Traditional Values Coalition. It's like, wow. Yeah. They're yeah. on a hate group. It might be the first. Act for America. Yeah. 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 That's right. And then all those posters. I had, uh, also I found an article about... Uh, Franklin Graham's response to uh, Joy Behar's <coughs> remark on The View. Uh, she uh, likens uh, Christianity and mental illness and says, uh, <laughs> and Franklin Graham says, because of that, believers need to be alarmed by her anti-Christian statements. Yeah. Graham responded to Behar's, Behar's dialogue on the ABC show about Omarosa Manigal, a former White House staffer who questioned Pence's, Vice President Pence's quote unquote healing from Jesus and suggested that people should be worried about the vice president's state of mind. And this is a quote from yeah, that was a long time ago. It was. Every Christian who is r listening right now, whether you are a Catholic, whether you are a Protestant, Baptist, Evangelical, Pentecostal, whatever you may be, this should scare the socks off you, Graham told radio host Todd Starnes. For Joy Behar to say that all Christians are mentally ill is like suggesting you need, is ill is like suggesting you need to lock them up they, Bahar and others, need to be taken out of society because these people are a danger. And here's, here's what she said. It's one thing to talk to Jesus. It's another thing when Jesus talks to you, Bihar said on her show. That's called mental illness, if I'm not correct, uh, hearing uh, voices. So... Um, probably. I was going through all this stuff, the Lord spoke to me on a couple of things, and he said, because I've been focusing on my grandson's salvation, he said, the first
first thing you should say he does is he blocks salvation. And once you're saved, then we need to block education and services. And that's his agenda. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. So you have to be on your guard. First of all, everyone, your objective with everyone is their salvation. And if they're saved, then small amounts of iron sharpening iron. So my conversation with my grandson yesterday, I was talking about God the Father. His name is Yahweh. And the son is Yeshua. And you could see him just like, what? Tell me about this. It was great. That's really cool. But it's, but I, I, I found all of this to come down to that point that we don't have a strategy on, on our side of the fence. We aren't preparing ourselves for how to deal. Vice President, I feel for the bri Vice President to make a public statement like that in front of a bunch of people that don't understand what that means is irresponsible at the least because it does more harm than it does good in promoting what, we're, what our agenda is. We have to be strategic, and we are not on the same page, and we are not moving forward as a group. The, the Muslims are, and, the, and the, uh, um, the Mormons are, you know, and, and pretty much all the other religious sectors have an agenda and a, a strategy. If our strategy is only prayer, then it's the greatest strategy. But there has to be more to it than that. There has to be a smart thinking in for it. You know, the, um, I, I want to share some of Mikey's uh, um, some of his rhetoric um, as it applies to the Christian values in the, in the military. In a 2006 interview, after the Christian embassy interviewed Pentagon officials about the evangelical faith, Weinstein said, we have a virulent, listen to this language, a virulently dominionist, fundamentalist, evangelical Christian element within the Pentagon. Okay, they, they would prefer this to be the Pentecostalgon, <laughs> not the Pentagon. <laughs> That's what they would prefer. They're trying to turn the Pentagon into a, I'm going to quote him, frickin' faith-based initiative, and that is not what our military is about. He went on to call it a national security threat. This is Christian values in the military. A national security threat, every bit as bad as Al-Qaeda, Al -Qaeda, and these people should be court-martialed. Wow. He said he intended to get as much information as he can, fashion it into a dagger, and then stab at the heart of this unconstitutional, wretched, vile darkness at the Pentagon. This unconstitutional darkness, we will stab it at it with our dagger until we kill it. He goes on to say in another interview, we are facing an absolute <coughs> fundamentalist Christianization, a, Taliban, a Talibanization, Talibanization of the U.S. Marine Corps, Army, Navy, and Air Force. Trying to move that out of the military. Well, I, see I how mean, that worked in the past. Yeah. So our nation was founded on Judeo-Christian ethics and the the Bible. I mean, you know, not the Quran, not anything else. So it's infused into the fabric of who we are as a country, and no one played that out better than the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. But now they're everything else eroded, mm -hmm. and now they're eroding the faith. Yeah, and some of the uh, defense agencies are listening to him, and are backing down from their. Christian stance in a lot of ways. And they do that out of fear. He's, a, he, out of anything else. he's an attorney. I, I think he may be ACLU or one of those. Uh, I think he's ACLU, an attorney. But his, his mission in life is, uh, at this point, anti-Christian. Anything that's anti-Christian, especially in the military, he has serious heartburn about. In May 2013, Weinstein was quoted as saying, as soon as we find a fundamentalist Muslim, atheist, Jewish person, or anybody else, we will be happy to fight them. But so far, they have been few and far between. So, you know, he's justifying the fact that he's fully focused on on, his, on, on, his, on implementing his anti-Christian agenda. Yeah. He's, that's a, he's a really scary person. Is he related to Harvey? Yeah, it's probably. Uh, the New York Times, uh, all the editors did an op-ed together and um, essentially said liberals we need to take a page out of the Godfather and go out and get up in arms about the fundamental conservative right wing. Right. You know, a call to actual violence. And you, you see them doing it. Yeah. All right. Anybody else got anything you want to share? Yeah, Harvey's not brought up. Ooh, that's uh, rough, right?
laptops and everything now. You see yeah. It? You see that? Uh, yeah, this thing just got a full, uh, this thing is highly reliable. Atheist Communication Conditioning. That's a conference that's coming up with the U.S. State Department. The official announcement for that day is we'll do a Christian organization. We, have, we actually have a heresy day, hmm. uh, but but we're hopefully it's it's an actual heresy day. It's an atheist. But, it's uh, a woman? It's atheist? Yeah. Strikes <laughs> right off the bat. Uh, so she was the publisher. She opened as an atheist, and we're gonna keep her on track as an atheist. Hmm. Why would you want to keep her on track? Well, I guess I it's guess like she has a lot of other uh, popular things she ministers to every day, and we we just want to get the more exposed she is to do it. You know, things that sound good. slippery slope too. Like I was talking to a pastor here in South Orange County and he has a woman pastor on staff and I asked him if that was biblical and he said no. And I said well what is her role then? And he says well she works within the women's and, and it works in the church faculty and you know she does this, she does that. And I said to him do you, do you recollect Paul's letter to the church on the issue with his son sinning living with his mother, which was actually his stepmother, and Paul said that that has to be dealt with, his answer to me was, well, God will take care of it in his time. And I thought to myself, what an irresponsible comment, and this is why we've gotten to a point that we don't say, hey, this is a problem, it needs to be dealt with, and we need to deal with it now, not well, we need to be loving and kind. Yeah, no question. We are a reflection of Christ. But <laughs> when there is a problem, then deal with it. Yeah, well, what killed me, too, is I was talking with this priest about a week and a half ago, and they were obviously doing their job. perspective and then he went kind of off to the left and then this is where Christian was. I'm like, oh, that's funny that you guys got to trace that. He laughed and he's like, well, that's from my perspective. Kind of like, this is what the other people broke off from us. And the, the, the Kino Caucus has a very a wide variance in their position. And there's a caucus that's right here in Irvine that mainly is Christian. There's yeah. 10,000 members. Oh yeah. Yeah, my neighbors go to that. I mean, it's kind of like when you talk to the Mormons, like, oh, I believe there's only 
that Jesus Christ is the only way to get to God, and you need first relationship, and you start to have a conversation with them, they just say, this is who Jesus and who is God. It's like, oh, we got the wrong guy. I believe there's so many saved in the Mormon church, they make them all of my kids, just all like crazy kids. They don't even understand what the Mormon church teaches on who Christ is. And the salvation has come not because of the Mormon church, but because of their relationship in pushing for God and not being poisoned by the Unfortunately, that's one area where it works well when they don't educate the members about doctrine and dogma. I mean, you know, it's kind of like it, it's affecting us in a negative way. They have the love in Christ, and that's enough out there in the front. And now, now preaching the doctrine actually would help them. Most of the only Mormons that would just follow the Lord Jesus would be Mormons. Right? Not the ones that are Mormons. The ones that are yeah, uneducated. Right. Right. Well, it even says in the Book of Mormon, it says the Father and the Son are one. Right. And so when you ask them about that, they say one is uh, one in purpose, not substance. And that's what it says in Psalm So if you you actually, I used to talk to them, and I had a whole bunch of stuff outlined in the Book of Mormon that actually supported Christian doctrine. Like, how do you explain this? It says and, it right here. Yeah. And they wear a cross and a military uniform. So anyone that any soldier that isn't able to make, to make that distinction by asking exactly what their theological background is, they can't get that. They should have another symbol. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the horn. Yeah, the horn over the cross. Yeah. It's so much more and more rhetoric. It's, it's pretty interchangeable. Mm. In, another, in another 2004 interview, Weinstein called evangelicals Protestant radicals. He called them Christian Taliban said the Christian right is a fascist group. Um, he goes on to say, um, what, what, what year was this? That was in 2004. Right. I don't know what 2004 was. Right. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, oh, then he's got, he calls the Department of Defense a crypto factory for their own faith based initiatives. Whoa. Well, you know, when you tear the tree one at a time and say God is bad, yeah, that's, that's yeah. what propagates this. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's like shaking people. It doesn't matter. It's the problem is it's one. Yeah, what is that? Uh, something Baptist. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wrong. Yep. The problem is, is that those guys are crazy. It's easy, guys. I see my time away. <laughs> so there, make no mistake about it. We are in a culture war. And uh, at this time, if you're an evangelical fundamentalist Christian, uh, you're you're targeted by FBI, CIA, um, all all left wing 
uh, people. So, oh, go ahead. Yeah, so, yeah, to equate us with Taliban, wow. Could we say this culture war started in 1962 when they started removing prayer from public schools and then the Bible from public schools? So maybe that was the pivot point. 50s, we were still a Christian nation. Every television show, they prayed, they had a Bible. They would read the Bible on, on secular television and pray in Jesus' name. huh? And in schools, yeah. And it's funny because our small town, uh, uh, quite a few of my classes, we still open with the pledge and prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so the Republicans realized, man, we're in the midst of a culture war. And so they enacted the Defense of Marriage Act. Remember that? Uh, enacted in 1998. Think about this. Federal law defined marriage as a union between one man and one woman. They saw that there was a push by the liberals to, hey, a man can marry a man, a woman, a woman. No, let's do the Defense of Marriage Act. And it passed, man, by huge numbers. Which is interesting that we have to actually come up with that. Yeah. Allowed states to refuse re uh, to recognize same-sex marriage. It was struck down in 2013. Isn't that long ago? Five years ago, they struck it down. Uh, 2000s, uh, yeah, all of this stuff. We don't, we don't need to go through that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 2010s, remember the military, the end of Don't Ask, Don't Tell? Um, all right. So partisan polarization. In, in 1994, there was a huge crossover between the ultra-right and the ultra-left. You can see now in 2017 that it's the, the, the thrust is a complete divide between Democrat and Republican, blue state, blue church, could we call it, and red church, and we went through that. Um, right. Well, and so here, here's the thing. What they're doing, the top is the elite politicians and all of that. So see how skinny theirs is? They lost their, their major base, the silent majority. That's how Trump won the election. But the Republicans, it's the major base that are real right wing. And at the top, they're more, um, does, that, does that make sense? Yeah. The, yeah. So the median on each side, and this is... Um, yeah, on a graduate. Right. Oh, yeah, and it will, no, make no mistake about it. Uh, and you see attitudes of Democrats toward the Republican Party. They see it as a threat to the nation's well being. <laughs> and Republicans uh, see the Democratic Party as a threat to the nation's well being. So this divide, this polarization of America is, is, I mean, some theorists say it could end in civil war. Um, yeah. Oh, 2016, a significant percent of Republicans tend to think Democrats are lazy, immoral, and dishonest. Now, how would we define a, a left-wing Democrat? Us in this room.
<laughs> All right. You know, when it comes down to it, and I've talked to a few, and I have friends that are, are uh, Democrats, ultimately they are opposed to Judeo-Christian ethics being uh, politicized and legalized or, or uh, protected in legal ways. They want the homosexual agenda. They want open borders. They want all of that. Uh, and Democrats view Republicans as dishonest. <laughs> Trump, mainly because of Trump. Go ahead. But among the Democrats, I mean, voted for a Democrat in Kennedy. Because the Democrats were once all about the working man, all about, you know, protecting the, the, the fundamental base of the working man. And that's all gone. Yep. And you have a big portion of the rest of us who voted for Trump. And all the stuff you're talking about. Right. Yeah. You know, we, we, defi- we define some of those positions. Um, you see, some of those, the, you know, the, those positions by definition immoral. Right. Yep. Um, it's right here. Uh, information is beautiful dot net. Um, and the dude that made it is David McCandless and Stephanie Pasovec. So beliefs, religion, scientific, um, uh, what? Uh, information is beautiful.net, and it's uh, left versus right infographic. From the new infographic book of visual exploration, the visual miscellaneum. <laughs> It's kind of cool, but they, they kind of put together the divide. Um, if you want to copy that slide, I can send it to you. Um, yeah, remind me. Hey, Siri, remind me to send a copy of the left versus right infographic to all the students of biblical philosophy at 11 a.m. She sounds so sophisticated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so the left right now is is really becoming more socialistic. They want both economic and social equality and a big government to enforcement. Now, not just equality. They want equity. What is that? Yeah, equity is equality of outcome. So not only do they want people to at least have the basis of equality to then either be successful or not, but they want equality of outcome, meaning we should all get paid the same, be recognized the same, almost real communism. Right. Yeah. Mike. Yeah. Did you did you have a? Oh, okay. <laughs> Equanimity. And what's that? Oh. Of creating, uh, right. Tip- typically, liberals want economic equality but social freedom, meaning uh, there's still that social freedom that isn't quite as bad as that. Conservatives want government to protect social tradition but not run the economy, and they, they still want uh, personal freedom. Libertarians, you know any libertarians? Yeah, do. You do. So do I. You know one. Yeah, exactly. You know exactly who I'm talking about. Want both social and economic freedom and a very small government, which isn't a bad thing. If we look at the political spectrum today, we have uh, communism on the left and fascism on the right. What is fascism? 
It's an authoritarian government uh, and typically totalitarian government. And uh, do, do right wingers really want that? No. Yeah. So and here's what's funny. You look at the Antifa um, protests and all of that. They are the true fascist. They want an authoritarian government that literally protects all the liberal freedoms and do whatever you want to do. Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I added Antifa and fasc is really fascism here. Fascism. I know exactly. So their tactics is fascism. And 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 truly, I mean, I don't know who they're labeling as fascist, but it's probably neo-Nazis, which really aren't even part of the true uh, red church, if you would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So there's this conflict that's going on, and they're trying to bridge that now. And I think that's where the Antifa is, is coming into play, is trying to bring those two ways of thinking together so it can be spread successfully. Right. And now, as we saw in that one um, uh, graphic a, wh a while back, most Democrats now are really falling into the liberal socialists, and most Republicans are falling into conservative, even into that Tea Party mentality um which a lot of little girls love you know tea parties <laughs> yeah right so political platforms we know this uh democrat uh pro-choice um pro-same-sex marriage support government administrated health care increase gun control that's a big one for them right now um yeah uh, in favor of public schools, want to invest more in infrastructure, pro-labor union, Republican pro-life, anti-same-sex marriage, against government-administered health care, pro-gun rights, in favor of school choice, and against, against increased taxes and anti-labor unions, for the most part. Okay. Um, this divide is growing wider. Yes. Yeah, which is already high. So the culture clash in America is a battle over values. Do you think that's a fair statement? Yeah, well, absolutely. Right. And ultimately, it, these political disputes where lines of, are being drawn are influenced by the values behind them. Um, yeah, absolutely. And truth is, uh, is what's falling apart. Uh, the culture conflict is animated by deep differences in people's beliefs about morality. Two cultural camps, I'll call it orthodox. Morality is as or more important than self-expression. Morality derives from fixed rules from God. So that's right, right wing, fundamental, conservative. That's what most believe, even if they're not Christian. Um, and progressive personal freedom is as or more important than tradition. Rules change based on circumstances of modern life and individual preferences. Autonomous um, thing. Um, all right. So assessment, Trump versus who? 
It, the more and more he speaks, the more and more. <laughs> yeah. He, he hasn't slowed down on the buffoonery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true. Okay, so now when he was elected and he swore the oath in 2017, right? Okay, here's what the left thought about Trump and Trump supporters. This was in the National Review, January 24, 2017. But he has reoriented the main lines of battle away from issues related to religion and sexual morality onto the grounds of populism and nationalism. Trump's culture war is fundamentally the people versus the elite, national sovereignty versus cosmopolitanism, and patriotism versus multiculturalism or globalism, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, now take that, and that's because you're young. Now, when I grew up in public school, we were taught, without doubt, America is the great melting pot. You come here and become American. You leave all your cultural baggage behind. You become a apple pie, baseball, football, all, all American, speaking English. And so that melting pot mentality was taught even in public schools all the way up until probably the mid to late 70s. See, it, it, it yeah. Me too, because if I moved to Japan, it's going to be because I love Japan, I love their culture, I love everything. You know, it's like, wow, I love the Japanese people, and I love what they stand for, I love their ideology, and I'm going to go there. Yeah, I love sushi, and, and I'm going to go there and learn the language and immerse myself. I'm not going to try to bring my American culture to, you know, I might bring some components, but I'm not going to bring, hey, we need to set up an area where we just treat, it's like, wait, you're in Japan. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're in Rome, it's like become a Roman citizen. Right. That's why you go to Rome is to become a Roman but citizen. But there's, there's an overall systemic value system that's been applied into and become right. the idea. And now if you can change that value system, it becomes a mentality. Yeah, if you preach that, then you're like a big in the way. So, so back then, it was multicultural cuisine that maintained its cultural differences. Cuisine, where you would eat. Hey, let's go to Little Italy and have Italian food. Let's go. Now it's, no, we're Italians. Now, no, we're Muslims. We're this. We're, so instead of one nation under God, melting pot, we, we now have several nations under the banner of America existing within our, our yeah. 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 Right. So what do you think the biggest right now uh, left versus Trump issues are? Immigration. Trade. Economy. And in that immigration subcategory, he's a racist, he's a xenophobe, he's... Yeah. 
Trump is trying to stand for conservative values. Yeah. Uh, military, he's fully behind it. Yeah. Law enforcement. And working class. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The universal, hey, we all worship the same God. Okay, uh, left one, open borders, higher taxes to pay for welfare, etc. cetera. Uh, progressive values. And I hate to even call it progressive. I think they're degressive. <laughs> You know, uh, put pressure on military and Leos to be more inclusive and tolerant and all of that. Huh? Law enforcement officer. Uh, what else? Yeah, what, what, else, what else is dividing? Oh, yeah, climate change. Yeah. Right. Hmm. <laughs> I think it's a person. Uh, you can't say that anymore. It's walking yeah, up right there. Yeah, yeah. If I feel uh, uh, like breathing. All right. What about Trump's base? I mean, the people that voted Trump in, are they concerned? What are they concerned with here? Immigration, yeah. Are they really concerned about trade or economy? Yeah. 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 Right. True. Oh no, Trump got the coal workers back. All of that. Yeah. Jobs. Yeah. Economy. Um, Trump's base on these probably against. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, Frontline issues for a lot of Trump's base that I know in the Bible Belt and talking to people around all lives matter, not black lives matter. Traditional views of marriage, traditional views of gender, Judeo-Christian ethics, small government, personal freedom, Second Amendment, First Amendment. What else? Right. Right. What scares me about Trump is that he is, he is biased to what he needs to at the moment to become what he has to become. Exactly. To be right. But see, I also see it differently. Like, I see that God put him in office, and I think he, uh, he knows that. And it's almost like he can hear it. But then he says, like, I can go out to the street and shoot someone right now. He realizes he just wasn't good in office. And I think that was what God put him when he got in office. Just like Obama, God put Obama in office. Aspire to whatever circumstances. What's the difference between his mentality and action? When will we 
Absolutely. So, so just to go on, on the other side, the left, they, they really are concerned about black lives matters, not all lives matter, because who doesn't matter right now? White males. The, right? Okay. Uh, traditional views of marriage, the left says what? Oh, no, marriage is between any consenting adults that, that want uh, traditional views of gender. Oh, no, you can pick your gender. And now even little kids are being taught, this is what you were born with, but you don't have to be that. You can choose. It Was it kindergarten or first grade, Scott? It was crazy. Judeo-Christian ethics, they are anti-Judeo-Christian ethics. Remember in the last days, they'll call good, bad, bad, good. Um, small government, they want big government, personal freedom. Do they still want that? It's, it's going to remove personal freedom. When, when socialism takes hold, you don't have the freedoms that you had before. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They would report to the government locally, and that would be how they would continue to support and instill their legal aspect of, of control in their communist realm. Right. And so that's the degree of risk is you're watched by everything you do and say. And now they're facial recognition, they have cameras everywhere, and you're, what's it called? Social credit sc score. Okay. So First Amendment, they say free speech, but what did they do to Ben Shapiro when he goes to Berkeley to, to talk about issues? They, they riot. Yeah. Yes. Shapiro, I just heard the other day, the last time he spoke, they had to hire 500 security guards. 500. Whoa. All right, so why do they hate Trump and Trump supporters so much? You know, you wear a MAGA cap, make America great again. You get beat up, spit on, all of that. So uh, here's what an article that came out in The Guardian November 4th, just a few days ago, 2018. In the 158th year of the American Civil War, also known as the year 2018, the Confederacy continues its recent resurgence. Its victims include black people, of course, uh, but also immigrants, Jews, Muslims, Latinos, trans people, gay people, women who want to exercise uh, jurisdiction over their bodies. Okay, this is how they're labeling Trump and Trump supporters. Okay. It goes on to say, the Confederacy battle in favor of uncontrolled guns and poisons, including toxins and streams, mercury from coal plants, carbon emissions in the upper atmosphere, and oil exploitation in previously protected lands and waters. Its premise appears to be that the protection of others limits the rights of white men, and those rights should be unlimited. Okay, do you see what they're really thinking? And I, some of my liberal friends, they really believe this. If, if you're a Trump supporter, they say you're a racist, you're a fascist, you're a, a xenophobic, you are 
ultimately oppressing. Mm-hmm. The Democrats were pro-slavery and all of that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Mm. They're saying by the year uh, 2045, uh, whites will no longer be a majority in America. 2045. That's still a long ways off. All right. Later, the article said, we are 21 months into the reign of an openly Confederate president. I mean, just think of the verbiage there. Uh, and implications. One who has defended Confederate statues and Confederate values and Confederate goals because Make America Great Again harks back to some antebellum fantasy of white male dominance. And that's why they hate. Yeah. That's why they hate us so much. There's tons of YouTube videos, but uh, let's check out this one. Their way or the highway. There's no political discourse. There's not two sides. 
You're right. It's not just baptism. Now, I don't know what Antifa is a group, so I can't say if they're doing that or not. I've heard them recently, but that would be fascist if they're doing that. However, the Trump is doing that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Without sourcing his yelling, he called for leaving the Paris Climate Agreement. He called for leaving the Paris Climate Agreement. Uh, so the people were coming to the video. That's why I'll never ask Trump supporters what's going on and try and you know talk to them. So this video we will. Let's hear from Trump people and see what they have to say. They are so brainwashed by this liberal media narrative that all Trump supporters are racist or all Trump supporters are Nazis. And we're constantly, I mean, if they even came to our, one of our rallies and saw the incredible diversity of all... He's a Trump supporter. We have blacks for Trump. We got Jews for Trump. That's right. You know, we have all these groups coming and supporting us, and we won't allow this leftist liberal media to push these false narratives any longer. If they took the time to, like, explore a little bit past the Facebook article and actually look in the real news and what's going on, their opinion would be completely changed. Look at the <laughs> and they just go right after you like I don't want to hear anything you have to say Trump sucks Trump sucks you suck you suck a lot of people are just acting from emotions here guys Trump's a fascist heard it here first the fascists of the future will call themselves anti-fascists the mainstream the mainstream media loves to accuse their opponents of what they're guilty of themselves right so we should recognize this so they're the fascists. They're the ones that are pushing for this globalist agenda. They support the CCP. And then you build off each other, but they didn't see it. And after doing your research on the internet, it's a All right. So there's a lot more we could look at, but. Yeah. Go ahead, Scott. What? Yeah. To raise minimum wage to a million dollars an hour. Right. But so it's, it's just, it's not, it's, it's not considered in logic. I think what about the Obama said we stopped needing a magic wand to bend back up. We still always can see what that wand looks like. All right. <laughs> So post-Christian America, that's part of the divide. Uh, when the silent majority rose up and spoke, mainly, I would say, the evangelical base Trump was elected, this caused all of this uproar and hatred. Um, Western nations are said to be post-Christian. What does it mean? Uh, perhaps it says little about attitude or in it, but perhaps it's a fair description of the state of the church in our nations. Uh, I, I got to skip some of this. Because we've we've covered it before. I didn't know if if we'd get through that faster. We had a lot of discussion in this course, so we don't really need to talk about it. We know pluralism, multicultural, multi-faith society. Uh, how is this causing more polarization in America? Right. So when when something that you believe in is not logical, you have to appeal emotionally to get others to believe it. And that's why the left is so emotional, screaming, going crazy. And the right is more logical, even as the video we just saw, because if you can't defend it logically, you're going to get emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and you see them, they're like lost puppies, right? <laughs>
Right. Christianity, right. Right. And America's growing the economy in a lot of ways, right? Creating all the infrastructure. That doesn't happen by accident. Right. It takes a, a particular set of values to do that. Yes. So if you erode those values, you can't expect to sustain that there's a country to be the same. There's, there's going to be deterioration. Yes. The underlying infrastructure. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, according to Barna, 2017, the new moral code, people should not criticize someone else's life choices. Almost 90 percent of all adults in the U.S. agree. Seventy six percent of practicing Christians. That's those that go to church every Sunday. All right. 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 Yeah. And they phrase it really well. I mean, uh, criticize. I, I'm, I know they define it because Barna always defines all the terms. Uh, I'm thinking it's not like, hey, you're stupid and all of that. But it's like, you know, I don't agree with that lifestyle. And I think it leads to uh, damage um, kind of thing. So new moral code, people can believe whatever they want as long as those beliefs don't affect society. Eighty percent of the population of America agrees. 61% of practicing Christians agree. That's a huge number. That's a majority. Uh, any kind of sexual expression between two consenting adults is acceptable. 70% of adults agree. 40% of practicing Christians agree. Okay, so the best way to find yourself is to look within yourself. 91% agree. To be fulfilled in life, you should pursue the things you desire most. 86%. Agree? Hmm. All right. So living with the quiet revolution, we have one minute. Um, what's the goal of Christianity? What should be our goal in the midst of this culture war right now? Great Commission, love. Yeah, truth. So should it be to change laws? Hey, here's the problem with that. We live in a government by the people for the people. So God has granted us stewardship over laws in this nation because we have a say. Since we have a say, it should. It should be everything. All consuming, but first and foremost, we have to get out there and show them God's love, lead them to God, and let the Holy Spirit change the lifestyle issues that go against the Word of God. Amen? Ah. <sighs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what I found. Uh, I was very vocal about voting for Trump. I said it from the pulpit. If you're a Christian, you need to vote for Trump. We have to vote for whoever lines up closest to Judeo-Christian ethics, and his platform does. I don't care who, if it, he was an atheist. I would still vote for him because his platform lines up with the Bible more than uh, the left did. Today, I, when I'm witnessing to people, I, I cannot say I supported Trump because immediately they get angry. Have you seen it? Uh, they, they immediately think you're a Confederate, racist, xenophobic idiot. And so I'll usually say, hey, Trump is a buffoon. Yeah. 
I mean, I say I agree with some of his politics, but man, he is, <laughs> yeah, that opens a door for me then to engage them, if that makes sense. I don't like him saying things. Yeah. Right. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that uh, you have chosen for us to live in this generation. And Lord, even as Pastor Chris in his homily uh, uh, last Sunday, I believe, uh, Lord, we need to make an impact in this generation. We need to, to live for you, to proclaim your truth, to stand for truth in the midst of a dark and hurting world. I pray that you would give us all the tools to be the most loving, articulate, powerful men that the world and those in our realm of influence have ever seen. In Jesus' name, amen.